Hey guys, and welcome to my first video tutorial on uh, advanced lightning for After Effects. <clears throat> now, if you're wondering why I'm not making a free program tutorial, it's because nobody ever requests um, tutorials for those pr free programs, except for recently someone asked me how to upload a video onto YouTube, and, well, from Wax, all you gotta do is render it, just like I've showed in some of my other videos and you upload that just like you would to, uh, any other YouTube video so um, anyway this is I'm just gonna show you how to make a good advanced lighting and it's not gonna have that really weird ripple effect where it goes up and down as it goes across the screen so because I think people use that to cheat and get past the um, the actual lightning animation so I've already um, imported my uh, video and made a new comp, but if you don't know how to do this, go just go to composition, new composition, and then set the size and the, you know, all this all this stuff you can set to make it um, what you what you want your video to be. But I've already made one. Um, so right here, comp one. Uh, if you don't know how to import a video, you just right click into this little th uh, panel here, project, then go to import, and then you go to file, then you choose your file, and it will import it. So, go ahead and start by dragging your video down to the timeline. And uh, sometimes it gets really blurry. If this happens, just look right down here next to this little uh, green, red, and blue thing. It'll say either full, half, third, or quarter. This is the render. Uh, this is the pre-render quality. This is how well it will look when you're editing. So I like to put it at full just so I can see what I'm doing. And if it does slow down too much, I just put it at like half or third because it's not too pixely but I can still see what's going on. But I'll leave it at half. Just remember that when you export file export there AVI that's how you save the video. Either that or you render it but I don't use render. It's just yeah I like to use the export because it's a lot faster and it doesn't you don't have to go through as many steps and it pretty much does what you need it to do it, it renders it just like yeah it, it basically renders it but anyway um, when you go to export make sure that this is on full otherwise it will be low quality so to add the lightning there are two ways to do this now I recommend putting it directly on the video but there's also another way where you can just come down here right click new solid now what this does is it brings up this little window where you can adjust this new layer, the width, the height, make the same composition size, so it's the same as your composition. Um, this this is all just, you know, you can mess with it if you want. Uh, here's the color that it will be. I like to leave it at black. Okay, And this is basically what it is. It creates this black solid. You can use it for masking. You can use it for lightsabers. Uh, well, actually, you better. It's better if you use white for lightsabers, because you know. And I'll probably do that as a tutorial, maybe. I don't know. So we can go ahead and get rid of that, though. Delete. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lightning directly on the video. Go to effects right here next to project above this. Uh, your project bucket. Uh, go to effect controls. And then in here, either go up to the top of the screen and click effects or effect or right click in effect controls and go to generate advanced lightning now it turns everything black it did not add a solid later it's just how it you know it's just how the lightning is rendered um, by default to fix this just click composite on original and now it'll um, get rid of the black for you so you can move the lightning around there we go. Um, I don't like the color. You, I don't know if you would either, but anyway. Here, go to glow settings and change the color. You can change color to whatever you want. And the glow settings is in advanced lightning. It's just this little drop down thingy. And the color. It brings up this color window. Um, I like a more ocean blue because it just goes along more with lightning. Uh, but you can make it any color you want, purple, red, you know, yellow, you know, go back to red, it's more of a Sith color, it's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at red, because that's really cool looking. Okay? So, there's your red lightning. 
Now it goes right all the way off to the end, no matter where your direction um, point is. There's these origin and direction. These right here are basically these two dots right here that I'm moving around. Um, you might notice that it goes off the screen. Well, to fix this, you're going to have to change the lightning type. So up here under light, advanced lightning, change the lightning type from direction to either strike, and I do not like strike as much. So I'm going to use two-way strike because it makes two lines going forward and one going backward. Uh, this helps with forking. Uh, forking is the little strips of lightning that kind of uh, come off of your um, strikes here. Let me stretch it out. Now there were originally two. Now over here you can see a couple extra and over here you can see one extra. Move around. There we go. Three. There's like three going through. Uh, this makes it to where those go all the way across. Uh, just strike. Here, I'll show you what just strike does. Strike. That's kind of boring on this side, the origin, because it's just one little line and it kind of splits out a little here. It's really boring and I think it's not very good for hand to subject lightning. So I like to use two way strike. So, and you can tell it already looks better. So, anyway, um, to animate the lightning, let's go ahead and go to. Um, okay, origin and direction. Go to the point in the timeline here where you want your lightning to start. And for me, it's where I, or one of my subjects, which is me, I clone myself in this video. Um, reaches out their hand, or my hand anyway. And then put the origin in the hand. And then put the direction on your subject. Now go ahead and make these keyframes by clicking the little stopwatches. Now just drag the slider forward. You know, depending on how much you move, I don't move very much my hand, so I can just kind of adjust it a little bit. There, and uh, I started the keyframes at one second, and then I just adjusted it at two seconds, and these dots move for me. Um, from between one and two seconds, they move from where I started the keyframe to where I put it on the second second on the on the yeah never mind it's hard to say um, let's go ahead and because my time's almost up uh, make this lightning a little more advanced looking so it's a little too bright the glowing so let's bring the opacity down to about 35 I don't know, it's, it's different for other people with different computers, different videos underneath. So, um, yeah, that's okay. Alpha Obstacle. Now what this does is because it is on this layer with the video, is it looks for the light and dark things and the color, and it either attempts to go into them or avoid them. It makes the lighting actually interact with your video. So make that one. That's usually an appropriate number for what, um, for whatever you know, it works really well. Um, it might not move at first all the time, but it does make a difference. I can tell you that. So, um, let's go ahead and bring up the glow settings because we don't need that anymore. Let's drop down uh, expert settings and make the complexity, complexity either 7 or 8. Now, you have to be careful with the complexity because if you make it too complex and give it too much turbulence, it will cause this little glitch to make every to make your either origin or direction have this big ball on it on one of the frames and that's kind of dangerous so you want to avoid that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and move on to point uh, part two of the tutorial. If this thing will cooperate there we go. Okay so you're in part two.